Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I, I still see people taking their seats, so please join when you can. Okay. I feel very tall on this uh, podium here. It's great. So, um, first of all, can I say a welcome to Dr. Charnan Pak Dijit, the Deputy Permanent Secretary from the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment. Dr. Gemma Edgar, Acting Deputy Head of Mission for the Australian Embassy to Thailand, welcome. Partners, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's a great pleasure to welcome you here to the Mekong Environmental Resilience Week for 2023, where we hope over the course of this week, we'll bring together over 200 different key stakeholders who all have a genuine interest in looking at the sustainability of the Mekong region. So we have a lot of knowledge, expertise, and capacity in the room, so thank you. And at SEI, uh, for those of you who don't know, our mission is to bridge the gap between science and policy, and indeed best practice. Um, there's no point in having great research if it isn't utilized and helping support policy, and there's no point in having policies if they're not implemented. So we've got to bridge the gap between all three. And as a global think tank, SEI continues to bring our expertise and capacity to the region over the last 20 years. We'll actually be 20 years in Thailand next year, so we look forward to celebrating with you. However, we can't do this alone. Um, we need to work in partnership in areas of co-production of knowledge with you, the key stakeholders here. And we need to make sure that this cooperation is amongst the different sectors and we work in a transdisciplinary process to ensure that we're listening to all those involved and all the situations that we need to address. And our contribution in the region revolves around connecting research to policy and best practice, as I said, so that we can have an impact on the ground for those who are struggling with some of the changing conditions, whether it's environment or economic issues. We want to do this in a sustainable and inclusive set of policies that are co-produced with you. Since 2005, we have been working with what's called the SummerNet, the Sustainable Mekong Research Network. But now more recently, and thanks to the great support from the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade from Australia, SEI and the consortium partners, and I think there's 24 organisations involved in this, are embarking on a journey to further enhance this inclusiveness and the effectiveness of science and policy interface through the Mekong Thought Leadership and Think Tank, Think Tank Network programme. Um, and through this program, we've recently developed a call for research and policy engagement projects to ensure that we have the latest information and the clear pathways to drive this positive change across the region. And throughout these initiatives, we emphasize the approach of the link from research to policy and further to best practice. So the objective is, as I said, to go beyond policy to make sure we're actually delivering on the ground for those who need it. As an organization and as a program, we make sure that we focus on being transparent in how we operate and we ensure inclusion across all aspects of our work, especially in the projects that we're going to design and work with and also in all the fellows that we brought on board, which I think some of you will see here today. We also put gender equality, disability and social inclusion at the forefront of all our initiatives and especially here through this Mekong Thought Leadership and Think Tank program. And by doing this, we hope that we can ensure leadership, knowledge development and policy form, uh, formulation are as inclusive as we can be, so that indeed no one is left behind. So in recent years, within SummerNet and since the inception of this program, we're also more focused on engaging with the next generation. And um, we have a number, I think 30, 35 fellows that we will support during this program. Many of them are here today, um, of the first batch at least, and we hope that we also expect that in the years to come, they will take leading positions either in governments or in organizations, in research, so that they will be influencing the future. And that starts today. So we're very proud to have those with us here today as well. So what is unique about the Mekong Thought Leadership and Think Tank Network is our efforts to engage and build alliances from knowledge-based policy influence organizations. And through these engagements and alliances, we will contribute to improved, more robust and more uh, inclusive policy landscapes in the Mekong region, especially in the nexus of water, climate and energy. And it's critical in this that we approach this with the mindset of cascading impacts, integrating transboundary approaches so that we, solutions that we choose in one country don't have a negative impact on another. So again, we need to work collectively to achieve this. So in line with our objectives in this program and with support from our colleagues at DFAT, we are organizing this alliance meeting today um, and this policy forum to open a gateway for further partnerships and to enhance the collaboration with all of you as key stakeholders um, with the aligned goals of more sustainable, inclusive and environmental resilience for all. 
So I thank you all for joining us today and we look forward to some key insights and understanding and good discussions. So keep us on our toes. Thank you very much. Mr. Niall Icono, MTT PSC Chair, Director of SEI Asia. Dr. Gemma Edgar, Acting Deputy Head of Mission, uh, Australian Embassy of Thailand. Dr. Chayanit Gritsasutta Shiva, Deputy Director of SEI Asia. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, very good morning and sawadika. On behalf of the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment of the Kingdom of Thailand, I'm pleased to welcome you to the Mekong Regional Water, Energy and Climate Alliance Forum 2023. This gathering marks an important milestone in our collective efforts to address sustainability challenge that Mekong Regional faces today. The Mekong region, with its exceptional natural beauty and resource, has long been source of life and livelihood for the community that call it home. If the rapid development of our community has undoubtedly brought growth and prosperity, but it has come at a cost that we can no, no longer ignore. Our commitment to the sustainable development must extend beyond economic gain to encompass social equity and environmental responsibility. It is within the context that this forum take on its crucial significance. Ladies and gentlemen, this forum is not just another event, but a dynamic platform for discussion between stakeholders. The aim is to engage into mutually benef bene beneficial exchange of perspective, delving into the critical knowledge gaps, policy making, and partnerships that can guide us toward a more sustainable Mekong region. The Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment recognized the importance of science policy. Participation of stakeholders in addressing environmental challenges such as climate change, biodiversity loss, and pollution. Through this platform, our ministry is keen to work with other partners in identifying research gaps and translate significant information into policy. We also recognize the need for an integrated approach to water, energy, and climate change represent in Mekong region. With the participation of representatives from the agencies, I'm confident that we can find solutions that will build a more sustainable and equitable future for the Mekong region. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the Sustainable Mekong Research Network and Mekong Thought Leadership and Think Tank Network Program for co-organizing this forum. I also commend them for their dedication in advancing research policy development and co collaboration. I also extend our sincere appreciation to the government of Australia and Sweden for their kind financial support in organizing this important event. Without doubt, through collaboration and open minds, we have the ability to make difference in our lives and those who depend on Mekong re region. Thank you, Kapun Ka. Uh, well, good morning, everyone, uh, and thank you for letting me follow both of you. Um, it's absolutely uh, my pleasure to join uh, to join Niall and uh, Dr. Chan and uh, to welcome everyone uh, to the Mekong Regional Water, Energy and Climate Alliance Forum. It's, it's great to see uh, so many enthusiastic people uh, joining us from across the region. So, kop Um It's really uh, an exciting day, I think, uh, for uh, certainly for Australia and, and, our, and our colleagues here as we 
you know, seek to deepen our partnerships uh, with, with the Mekong sub-region. Uh, I think Australia has had a, a relatively long uh, engagement in the region, partly because, you know, geographically, we're very much neighbours. Uh, and of course, we've got really strong and close people-to-people -people links, which have only gotten stronger in recent years. Uh, at the end of 2020, the Australian government announced what we call the Mekong Australia Partnership, or the MAP. And that basically committed Australia to work more closely with the region in a real diversity of ways, but at, uh, like including people to people links, for example, including, you know, politically. But really crucially to that is to work together more to address the impact of the climate crisis. Uh, because we know that, you know, while the impact here in the Mekong, uh, you know, is, is obviously, you know, a, 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 of a genuine concern, it, it's an issue for the globe. And, and exactly as uh, the Deputy Permanent Secretary outlined, it's something that we need to address and must address uh, by working together. I know that there's a real wealth of knowledge and experience in the region, uh, and Australia's aim uh, is, is to work with you, uh, researchers and academic institutions, to produce studies contributing to more effective policies to address climate, the climate crisis. We also want to do this through supporting a sustainable network of universities and research agencies working on water, energy and climate. Uh, and we hope that today's forum is one of the ways uh, that will, uh, you know, to, to expand people's understandings of the, of the issues. We're also going to be providing research grants for regional and local organisations because we know that there is value in locally read led research. So that's people like those of you in the room, people like those online. Um, uh, there is value in this locally led research because uh, it takes into account local experiences and it integrates traditional and sometimes indigenous knowledge and practice. We're also really pleased to be supporting uh, fellowships for promising researchers and policymakers in the region because we want the next generation of researchers to be well equipped and exposed to tackle the climate crisis. And I understand that the first group of fellows is uh, here in the room today, and I, I look forward to, to having the chance to meet you, uh, if not today, then tomorrow. Um, and, and, and I believe that we'll shortly, well, I think it's later in the day, be announcing some fellowship grants, uh, particularly for female researchers, uh, differently abled individuals, and those representing ethnic and indigenous communities in the region. So, you know, Australia's super excited and proud to be supporting these people. I want to take a moment to thank Niall and the SCI team uh, who have put together this week's event. So I can see, all of us can see just how much work has gone into this event. Um, I certainly acknowledge Sweden and the foundation blocks they have built through Summonet. A big thank you to Monray. You have a very, very ambitious climate agenda here in Thailand uh, and Australia is, is keen to support you as much as we can on that. Uh, but thank you for joining us today. Um, Thank you as well to Chula University for co-hosting this event, but mostly thank you to all of you for joining us today. Um, you know, uh, it is your active engagement that will make this event work, uh, and I, I look forward to, to understanding how it goes. So, kōkun ka, and um, enjoy today. Thank you. Uh, good mornings, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It is my really great pleasure to be here today and also deliver um, uh, introductory, I mean, introductory remarks. Uh, what I would like to really say today here, just to really give the background on what really, why we are here. Um, someone can go to the next slide, please. So I just want to really give the background that uh, the reason why we get together here Next slide, please. It's because we are really understanding that the region is really changing a lot. The Mekong region is changing. What are the changes? There's many things changed over the past uh, 20 years. So the region changed because of physical change, increasing more infrastructures and because of our we need for development. And at the same time, recognizing that uh, these developments needs come with the cost. So that's why we need to really think about how we address the cost on this uh, 
why offering the opportunities and also benefit, we recognize there are some those of people who really need to really bear the cost for us. And we also recognize the change in really demographic and societal uh, change. Uh, with uh, the growth of the economics uh, development in the region. And we also understand really rapid change in development in technologies. And last but not least, there's so much expansions of corporations among different uh, organizations, regional cooperation mechanisms. Next, please. So this is really have the opportunities for us uh, to expect that many regional corporations will contribute to the region. But one of the big question is, who will actually help bridging the high level discussions, the top down decision making process? Who will actually help be ambassador to raise really important issues of those who really need to rely on national resources and environment? And there in the region, there are so many mechanisms. And I would say there's only few long-term mechanisms that are not led by the government. So the government-led uh, initiative is great, but we feel that there will be so much benefit for us to cooperate together, having non-government and also work closely with other stakeholders in the region to reflect the need on ground. And one of the long-term network in the region, uh, we can name a few, and I want to highlight one of the network called Summonet, Sustainable Mekong Research Network, exists for more than 18 years already. Next, please. So uh, who is a Summonet? What is a Summonet? Summonet is a network that is established by 14 founding members from six countries uh, with a passion to use the knowledge-based uh, policy process to inform the policy. And now we expanded the network members to include more than 600 networks, members from 200 organizations. A lot of activity around uh, knowledge co-productions, engagement with their uh, stakeholders on ground to inform the policy. But I would say that uh, despite we have more than uh, 200 scanties and also many people working on research is still not enough. The region is really enormous. The challenge we are faced here, we cannot use the traditional knowledge to address. We need to be innovative, not only the context of the research methodology, but innovative on engaging with uh, policy process, with practitioners. Next, please. And that's why there are 25 organizations uh, so long, most of them associated with Summonet, try to really think about how we can move forward, build on a Summonet to address the challenge in the region. And that's why this is the born of Mekong Thaw Leadership and Think Tank Network program that's um, highly supported by the government of Australia uh, from DFAT, uh, Mekong Australian Partnership, uh, Mekong, and, uh, Mekong um, Energy and Climate Program, MAPWEC. So what is this program supposed to do? We try to build on the strengths of the summit and really make more proactive in engaging with policy engagement and also co-production of knowledge process. We try to see how we can enhance the regional alliance that already exists in the region. Next, please. The next infographics is to really uh, explain briefly what really Mekong Thought Leadership and Think Tank Network program will address. Uh, basically, what we're trying to do is um, how we can really enhance the water, energy, and climate research and policy interface that are more robust and more inclusive. When it comes to robust and inclusive, that means 25 organizations will never be achieving this really passions. We need to work with everyone. And by doing this, what we're trying to do as a, one of the small program uh, is to how we can enhance the role and the capacities and effectiveness of think tank in the region. When we say think tanks in the region here, we did not really only include the government think tank or formal organization that name themselves at the think tank. But we refer to any organizations that have the passions to 
inform the policy using the knowledge as their kind of um, uh, mechanisms to convey what we need to address in the future. Next, please. And what really the program trying to do is I would like to explain in four components. Uh, I will not read all, but I will say what is a highlight in these four components is that each component really play a crucial role in addressing the current gap in the region. The first one, how can we enhance the development of homegrown uh, leadership and homegrown thought leaders in the region in water, energy, and climate? This is the first component. The second component is really how we can address the knowledge gap that inform the practical solutions in water, energy, and climate through inclusive participatory process. And under that, we actually uh, do scoping studies and also offering the grants. And uh, my colleague will explain further. But I just want to say briefly, we are now uh, inviting the application for four flagship uh, studies for policy and practice and seven national rapid response grants projects. So if you really feel that there's really some burning topics and burning knowledge gap, burning policy gap that can be addressed or should be addressed in one or one and a half year. That is really right uh, kind of topic that we would like to support. The other component on component three are engagement beyond a dialogue. Today is one of the work under the component to make sure that we really have inclusive process in dialogue engaging with the uh, many stakeholders, not only policymakers, but all others, uh, knowledge-based policy organizations and uh, people and other organizations with really addressing the issue with disabilities, gender, social equality. And the last component is very important, is how we can support um, professional development for agents of change that Gemma highlighting the importance of supporting young generations to be future leaders. And we really have the passions to contribute to this. We cannot address this within 25 organizations. We really would like to invite anyone, organization that would like to host the fellow, really um, uh, inform us. So we would like to play some of the excellent talent fellows from four countries to be in your organization in one or one and a half year. Next, please. And today, I just want to, as mentioned earlier, there are still two or three uh, granting opportunities still on, and we will open for the application until end of this month. So uh, Dr. Tanapon will talk more in detail in the afternoon. So please really uh, keep really attention. The next, please. Now, I would like to really uh, highlight 25 organizations that we are working in a consortium. SCI is leading the consortium member, but I would say we have many bosses. We have program steering committees representing nine organizations. We have 17 organizations in consortium members. Really help decide this program, but we like to invite more. Next, please. And that's why we are here. And thank you for coming. This event have three objectives. The first one, we would like to present and discuss on the findings. Um, we have more than 100 organizations joining, contributing to the um, scoping studies to understand the context of the region. Different organizations put so much effort in addressing the issue linking with water, energy, and climate. And we will learn the result from there. Uh, effort during the past 10 years. And uh, lastly, we would like to really seek uh, the interest of other members and futures uh, to cooperate with us in the future uh, alliance or work that we will carry out under the program. Next, please. Okay, now here, you may want to know who are with us here. So I will say that I'm so pleased not only a colleague and friend that you could see in person here. We actually have more than 60 participants online. So we have uh, more than 100, 160 plus uh, participants registered in this event. 
And it's quite nice to see is that we um, have quite balanced in terms of gender. So uh, we have 52 women, uh, 46 men, and then we have non-binary one and prefer not to say one. So we really open for any uh, interest party to engage with us because uh, this is really not the work that only few people can do. This is the work for the whole legion. I would not say that only those living in the basin of the Mekong, but Mekong Legion citizens and friends who love Mekong Legion have really big work to work together. We have participants from different countries. I will not really say in each country, but I will say we really have a good coverage on uh, the participants who really have the passions to work on this together. Next, please. And how about the speakers? We highlighting the importance of having really uh, people who will be on the stage to speak and representing the will of people in the region. And I'm so happy we have quite balanced in terms of gender also. We have uh, 48 men and also uh, 52 the moment. And then we have many organizations joining this effort. Next, please. And the last slide for this, just to give the background on the participants, we have uh, several organizations, of course, uh, from Academia Group and also those who really do the research. And we also have quite good representations from civil societies and government. Also, we have donors with us, we have media, we have 8% of young professionals. So I'm so excited and always feel so much happy to have someone who young and really give positive energy and really kind of bright visions for the legion. And next, please, um, here I just want to call on um, all members contributing to the events. Um, I'd like to invite anyone you feel yourselves uh, from the government, from the Mekong countries. Can you please stand up? Mekong countries, please stand up. The government, the government, please. Yeah, so please give big hands. We know you are so busy. You are here. We are happy that someone really recognized our work. So, so much happy. Thank you so much for being here. And then we have great support from Australian government in Sweden and many others and my colleague from ACIS. Please stand up. Australia, Sweden, and all others. Yes, we stand up, donors. Thank you so much for uh, having us here. Program Steering Committee, Mekong Thought Leadership and Think Tank Network, please stand up. Steering Committees. Steering Committee. Yes, Dr. Nijan, so please stand up. So we have nine members, thank you. They are leading this program. And we also have some of the steering committees really work 18 years in the network with stand-ups. Stand up, please. We have actually 13 members here. Stand up, please. Thank you. And we have program advisors and all resource persons and speakers. Please stand up. Speakers, advisors, okay, all speakers and moderators, please stand up. Thank you so much. Okay. And we have our program fellow, MTT, uh, Mekong Thaw Leadership, Ting Tang Nenop fellows. We have seven fellows, please stand up. Don't be shy. You are the most youngest <laughs> members. Yeah, thank you. We also have the um, uh, Summonet Fellows and Coordinators from Summonet Young Professionals. Please stand up. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> then we have the show this evening, so please pay attention. Don't escape, okay, before dinner. Okay. And all other participants, please stand up. Who haven't been called, please stand up. Thank you so much for being here. Your passion, your experience will contribute greatly to the events and really for futures for the Mekong. Thank you very much. Kapkan Ka. <laughs>